Sorry for the delay, man. Apparently, my phone wanted to just trip the fuck out when it's time for the interview, and then it wouldn't let me turn it off, so I had to, like, hard reset it and shit, but we good now, so. Welcome to episode 40 of uh, Chop 15 with Jay Walker. I uh, hope everybody's having a good evening. Sorry for the delays, you know, technicalities, Instagram, all that bullshit. But uh, we here. Um, my guest tonight is a brother from out here. He is a teacher. He is a musician. He is a podcaster. He is an activist. He does a lot of things. He's a good dude. Sean Richardson. I'm going to go ahead and bring him on right now, and uh, we will get it going. Yo. What's good? Hey, man, shit, just fighting through some difficulties. You know how I go, man. Like, for some reason, my phone, as soon as I go live, it would pause. And then it would just sit there, and it wouldn't, like, let me do anything. But it was live, but it wouldn't let me do anything. So I had to, like, reset <laughs> my phone. It was tripping the fuck out. And, yeah, but I'm here, so we good now. How you doing? You know, just uh, trying to trying to make it through a day, you know? Yeah. One day at a time right now. Say what? You kind of uh, cut out for a minute there. What'd you say? No, I'm just trying to make it, you know, one day at a time. It's crazy times yeah. we're living in. Yeah, they are, man. How has life been for you during this situation? Um, being being at home and then, you know, things opening up and now going back to damn near being at home again all the time. How's it been for you riding this roller coaster? It's been crazy, you know, because it started... You know, we started teaching from home back in April. So that was, that took getting used to. And then school got out. And then in the middle, it moved. So, and then we just had to get tested last week because my girlfriend's friend tested positive. So we've been quarantining for a week. Just got their negative results back today. But, you know, like, just right. going through that, like, telling people, like, you know, changing plans we had with people and being like, hey, you know, we got to chill out for a week. So that was boring, running out of things to do. <laughs> Man. So how has it been for you teaching? Um, how 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 have the classes been for your students online? Have they been able to adapt to the situation? Um, like, because I, I, work, I work with troubled kids. Like, the kids at my school are sent there either because they've been arrested or they've been, uh, had behavior problems at their normal school. So they're not, even under, even under normal circumstances, they don't do that much work. So it was tough getting them to do work uh, during from home without, you know, even when I'm in the class with them, they don't do work. So me calling them or emailing them didn't work out. But there were a few that, that really took advantage of it and busted their ass and got a lot done. But some of them straight up were like, this is stupid. I'm not doing work. I'm not going to do this. And there's nothing I, you know, there's nothing I can do. Yeah. So it's like, they, they were they like, weren't even getting on the meetings? They, like, they said, forget it. Don't they? Yeah. Don't they wouldn't it. even, they wouldn't even get on the meetings. They wouldn't return my emails. Like I would call them and like, they would like, I, you know, I call their parents. They refused to come to the phone and talk to me. So it was just like, you know, I was uh, like, Hey man, like just check in with me once a week. So, you know, I'm doing okay. Like just write back to my email or something, you know, like you don't have to be doing work. Just like check in so you know we're okay, but yeah, some of them wouldn't even do that. Damn, that's crazy. How do you feel about them trying to um, open schools back up? How do you feel about that? You're Man, I've been arguing with people all day. No, like, here's the thing: like, my school would be good. Like, we don't have that many students. I have at max five or six kids each period. Okay, but in a normal school, there's I don't see how you can do it safely, even if there's 15 kids. In the room, you know, there's so many kids, and there's like, it's just going. There's so many people getting sick here in town that I don't know how you yeah. can control it and make it safe, especially with so many teachers who are older. Yeah, like I, 
You know, like if I was in my 50s or 60s, I wouldn't want to be going, you know, especially in a high school or middle school where there's hundreds and hundreds of kids. So it's just crazy to me that, you know, when we shut down in April, there were way less cases than there are now. And now they're trying to get people to go back to school now. And it has nothing to do with education, you know. It has no, It's just to so we can babysit people's kids so they can go to work. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that's exactly what it is. Because, I mean, why would you... I mean, you obviously want to start the economy back or keep the economy going or, you know, or restart it. Um, but, yeah, but the, one of the reasons they can is because people's kids are home. So get the kids to go back to school, then, we, you know, it's it's all a cycle, but it's like you're sacrificing people for the sake of the economy. Like, is it really exactly it? Exactly. It's like, you know, one of my friends was like, not that many kids die, but I'm like, there's 60,000 kids just in Washoe County. Like, how many is okay to die? How many teachers is it okay? You know, like, why are we making plans where we know some people are going to die and are we're okay with it? Like, there's no other choice. We're, like, normalizing death now. Like, oh, it's cool. They're going to die anyway. You know, like, it's just not a big deal anymore. And it's like, it is a big deal if anybody dies. Why are you acting like their life is less important than yours? Because it isn't. Like, that's, we've been, tra like, you know, that's the sad thing that this has shown. It's like, people's lives don't matter in America. Like, you, all of us, all of us mm -hmm. are just mm -hmm. sac just ready to be sacrificed for the good of the rich people. Anything to get, like, that's what's been the problem. Everything's been about the economy. Every other country, you know, has been like, hey, we'll give people money so you don't have to go to work and we'll get this right. thing under control. And here they're worried right. about st the stock market and how things look. Meanwhile, 140,000 people are dead. And it, and we're like they're telling us to get used to it and adjust to it and say, like sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's, it's fucking trifling, man. <laughs> it really is. It really is. And you know we're supposed to be the greatest country on earth, and here we are. You know, like we're like I've seen something where it's so the most uh, countries countries or places in the world that have like the most the highest infection rate right now, and it was like the top twenty. And it was six countries and like 14 states. Right? <laughs> it's, like, it's terrible, man. Like, we just don't care. Fools are just like, fuck it. I'm going to do what I want to do. And it's like, I don't know. Maybe it's because they haven't had anybody affect them, you know? Because it seems like it's starting to get closer and closer now, man. Because, I mean, my father is recovering from it. He's, he, he went through it, you know? And my stepmom had it, you know? So, like, I, now I know, I know people who had it. You know, one of my friends got it. And um, it's it's crazy. You start thinking about it. It starts getting close. But I mean, either until either that happens, people or they don't care. Yeah, like you know, luckily, I mean, luckily it was bad. But you know, people I knew, like my parents had it back in April. Someone we knew died from it back in, in beginning of April. So it was like all of a sudden it got super serious. All these people I knew had it. A couple people were in the hospital. Some people didn't pull through. So it became super serious for me. So even back then, I was like, look, man, like, I know people in the hospital right now with this who are, you know, young people. They're not, you know, they're not super old. And, other, you know, people are still out there arguing about it being a hoax or not that serious. People today are telling me, oh, it's just like the flu. Like, someone today is like, it's just like the flu. I'm like, comparing it to the flu, I'm like, bro, what are you talking about? Like, this just, you know what I mean? I've talked to this had it. It is not like the flu. It, it's like the flu on fucking steroids. That's what I've been hearing. Like, it's all some extra yeah. shit. You know? Like, so. my mom was sick for six weeks with it. You know? Like, it, she was yeah. in bed for three weeks. Try, you know? So, yeah, man. This, people in this country are stupid, bro. I don't know what else, <laughs> what else to say. Man. That's pretty much all you can say about it, man. So, damn. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, yeah, it's yeah, it, it's just getting wild out here, man. Like, um. So how how has it been with you guys doing the podcast and stuff? Because I know you guys have been doing that as well. You we tried to keep it going. It or are you doing it together again? We were doing it remote, and uh, like like it wasn't doing the normal numbers. Like people just weren't tuning in. Then we were okay. just about to start start it up again, and then we had to quarantine. I had to quarantine, and Caesar right now is in quarantine because some people in his family have it. So. Wow, those those plans have been put on like right when we were about to start up again and put on pause, and that just goes to show you like if just the t it's two people, if the two of us can't even do this, how is society supposed to function? You know, right, right, man, 
Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I've been, I've been, I was like, kind of like you guys, I was getting ready to start, um, you know, working with artists to get in the studio. And um, right, right when I was like, okay, maybe, maybe I can, you know, I'll just be extra cautious, blah, blah, blah. Boom, numbers went up. You know, now yeah. it's like, I can't. And then I found out my dad had it. And then I was like, okay, yep, I can't do it. I gotta, I gotta, you know, we're gonna do remote, remote for now. Sorry, but yeah. I, mean, I just gotta be. And that's be the real. thing. That's the thing. It's like, it's a, a numbers game, but you know, it's like the odds, the odds aren't, it's not going to be that bad, but all it takes is that one time for it to be bad. And it's, you know, it's not like, it's life or death. Like why gamble with something? You know, people are taking unnecessary risks, acting like nothing's going to, you know, bad's going to happen. And yeah. I keep seeing yeah. You know, things on Facebook where like, people are talking about it not being a bad thing, and then like they get it, and all of a sudden their story changes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of that. It's a lot of that. I didn't believe it at first, and now, you know, it's real, man. Wear a mask. Like, yeah, but you were out there just joking and partying a couple of weeks ago. It wasn't real. It's, not, it's only going to be real until it, it has to affect them or somebody right next to them. And until that happens, yeah. it's, it's a hope, you know. And that's the problem with this country is that so many problems until they, so many people, if they're not affected by something, they don't care about it or they deny that it's a problem because they're like, well, I don't see it or it doesn't happen to me. So it must not be that big a deal. Exactly. Speaking of which, that leads right into the next, the next point I was trying, I was going to lead you to, um, what do you think about everything that's been going on? Um, besides, you know, besides the COVID, you know, we also had to deal with, deal with, uh, murders and police stuff and i know you're really really active in the community out here and you have a you have a you have a voice and you're out here trying to do good and trying to do right what do you feel um about everything that's been going on and maybe maybe here in general before maybe the world like how do you feel about things here i've been encouraged just from the people i know that are stepping up and taking action and uh like going to city council meetings virtually and, and talking and uh speaking out for people who who can't or just trying to educate people and get them more involved but at the same time like the response of the police has been bullshit like they had a little forum a couple weeks ago and basically it was like look at all the stuff we're doing like shut the fuck up like leave us you know like it was you know we brought all these points and you know all these people called in and instead of like listening they were just like we look at what we're doing leave us alone Mm -hmm. They didn't really address people's, you know, concerns. And it just goes to show you, like, until we get people who are uh, representing us for real in, in places of power, like, things aren't going to change. Right. So I think right. that's the next step. People got to start looking, you know, that's why voting, especially in local elections, is important because those people are affecting your lives on a day-to-day -day basis. So just finding out who's running and, uh, you know, look at finding someone who's going to support what you believe in and putting your support behind them. So yeah. that's something I know Caesar and I are going to work on the podcast going into the fall uh, and trying to find out locally, like, who's running and, you know, try and educate people on who stands for what so they know what's going on in their community. That's a, that's a good thing that needs to be done because it always seems like it comes to these elections. Um, you don't you have to go search for this information. And why exactly. do I have to go search? If you're running for a job and you're supposed to be a public servant, you should be presenting me with this information. You know what I'm saying? Why do I have to go search you out? Like I had to, I had to spend like a whole half a day, but when I voted the last the, for the last election, just to figure out yeah. what was cool and what was Trying going on. You know? Yeah, like some of these people don't have websites. Some of these people have not done interviews or anything. They don't even fill out like the little form that yeah. they're supposed to do on the election site. So, like, my friend of mine, Alexis Hill, she's running for county commissioner, and she's been doing, like, Zoom calls and stuff to educate people not only on, like, what she's about, but, like, what her position in the government does. Mm -hmm. So people, you know, get more involved and know, like, there's these offices you don't know about, and there's people in there making decisions that affect you, and they don't have, might not have, you know, your best interests in mind. So, you know, salutes to her for doing that, and just yeah. that's what we need. Like, these things aren't necessarily taught in school. And all of this is for a reason. It's so like a small people who know what's up can get in these offices and just run their games and leave everybody out. So the same cycle can just keep repeating what's yeah, been going on. You know, it's the same. It's the same type of people. Even in this, you know, 
sometimes they get a little bit younger, but then they get in and they're in for the next 30 years doing the same thing that people were doing before, you know? Exactly. And, you know, once you get um, in, it's just all about staying in. Yeah, and half the time these do these people get in and then they're in for like thirty years. Like, I mean, you you I, I mean, I don't think I don't think anybody needs to be any in any position like that for like thirty years. I feel at some right. point you're gonna lose touch with what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Like there there's people like I mean, all the way at the top. You look you looking at the guys at the top, like the presidential candidates, they're in their seventies. Like, come right. on, dude. Like, do you really have the interest of the youth or people in their 30s or their 40s in, in mind? Well, no, this, man, you think, you know, some other shit. Well, it was just like, uh, the, it was like when they had all those things about Facebook and these tech companies, and they didn't even know how they work. And, the, you know, they're supposed to be given oversight and making laws about these things that, and they're listening to them tell them how to, you know, they don't even know how this, this stuff works. Yeah, like these people be in Congress for 30 years, 40 years, like, come on. You don't know what's going on. You spend all your time in D.C. trying to get reelected. You're not, you know, where the where your people live, represent them, knowing what's what problems they have, what's going on with them. So I think you're starting to see, like, around the country, like, a lot of people who have been in politics a long time are losing to newer, you know, new, some new bloods getting in there, and people yeah. are fighting back against it. But, you know, you can't, stop the, you can't stop the will of the people as long as they're engaged and out there. Yeah, that's the thing. We got to stay engaged all the way to the polls because that's the only, I mean, we got to get people in there who think a little more like us. I mean, it, it, not, it's not going to be perfect, you know what I'm saying? But it can definitely be skewed a little bit more fair because right now it's exactly. shifting way the wrong way. So we got to even it out a little bit at some point, you know what I'm saying? So why not now? It seems like now is the time. What up, Salty Brad? <laughs> yes. What would be a good term limit? You know, that's a good question. That is a good question. Because you do want years. people, you do want people to have some expertise in working the government, but you know, for Congress, I don't know, no more than three or four terms. Because it's only two years. Like, and the term is the same thing as the president, right? It's like four years, or is it two years? Uh, for congressmen, it's only two. Okay. And then uh, for senators, it's six. So, you know, give them two two terms and then you're out. You know, that's 12 years. 12, like, years. No I one... think 12 years would be a good number. I mean, that yeah, sounds like, like the, a decent number. Like uh, the president only gets two. So, you know, senators should only be able to get two. And, you know, Congress, maybe three or four, since there's only two two years long. But just rotate, get some new blood in there. Get And, it may, you know, they'd have to be more responsive to people. If they yeah. if they had term limits, exactly, exactly. And then yeah, once you got in, you could do. Yeah, you would be less reliant on like people giving you money. Exactly. There should be some laws against that. That's what I think because now you got people in there to come in and they come to these positions, and you know they're 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 politicians. They're not making that much money, but then all of a sudden they become millionaires while they're politicians for twenty years. If you've been on if you've been on the Senate, how are you making all this money? And see, that's where we went wrong. Was once, once they said that corporations could give money, like people could, mm -hmm. that was the end. That was it right there. We lost it right there because, you know, if I'm running, like, who are you going to listen to? This corporation, give, you know, funding, you, giving you hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars? Or are you going to listen to the ordinary citizens that don't give a fuck or you know can't pay or anything? You know, exactly. you're going to be beholden to them. They're the ones giving you the money. That's how you win. The whole system just goes from there. Exactly. Once that happened, nothing else, you know, it doesn't, until we change that, we're going to have to be stuck with the same problems. Yeah. Is this America, you know, cash rules? Yeah, that sh shit, yeah, it does. Man, so um, the other day, I, I, um, I saw an article in RGJ about the, uh, the, the, the current Sparks mayor and the former Sparks mayor talk, like defending the police actions over, over the Makai Lee case. And it, they were just like some tone deaf, like, oh, you wanted to fund the police? But yeah, we need more police, and I would never do that. And I stand behind the police. It's like, but the Reno PD is asking for what? Three more million dollars this year? For what? For what? What do you need three more million dollars for? When you, look, guys, you already got guys making six figures, like, for what? It's the greatest lie in America is that the police are there to serve and protect you. They're not.
There's Supreme Court cases that prove that they're not there. They don't have to help you. There's been times when people have called the cops, they haven't come, and then something bad has happened. They sue the police departments, and courts have ruled they don't have a responsibility for you. So that's, wow. that's the first thing. The second thing is, like, people, police don't deter or stop crime. They're there to punish cr criminals after crimes happen. Right. The things that deter and stop crime are like investment in your communities, making sure that, you know, people aren't living in poverty over generations. Like that's the stuff that affects the crime rate. The amount of police does not. So like yeah. if, and plus crime has been going down nationally and in Reno for years. So why is, you know, if crime's going down, why do we need more police? It's yeah. just, it's all just a numbers game. Like they're, what are they using this money for? Like, as a teacher, I know the school district is audited. We have to account for every single cent we spend. And it has to be have, like every single you money. They don't even give y'all any kind of money. And you still got to account for every penny. But why don't they exactly. ever have to account for nothing? And they're always like, this is how much you need, but we're only going to give you this. Make it work. With police departments, they don't even, they can't even account for what they're spending their money on. They don't even have, they don't even have data that shows you know, how much these officers, how much time they're spending working on crimes as opposed to sitting in their cars or just driving around patrolling. They can't even show that. We're like, you know, as a teacher, I'm like, that's bullshit. <laughs> like, we have, to, we have to show data on every single thing we're doing. Yeah. And we don't even hold cops to the same standard, and they're getting more, like, they're getting a third of the city's budget. Yeah. So it's just, it's why, like, people are, they just keep people in fear. Like, if we don't have these cops, bad things are going to happen. But most people who live in the suburbs, there's no cops there anyway because those people don't. There's no one doing crime because those people's lives are all right. Right. There you go. There you go. You get back to the point. It's about lives and the the well being of people. If everybody were well, everybody not everybody's going to be out here committing crime. Crime is going to be down. And not, and everybody well doesn't mean everybody's going to make the same amount of money. But everybody's able to fucking feed themselves, and they don't have to go rob exactly. steal to do that. Exactly. Like, if you live and if, you know, part of living in a society is that you should have some chance at a good life. And there's too many people who from from the jump are, are it's a struggle. You know, I worked, you know, I worked at trainer for seven years. And like so many of those kids, you know, like they're born into the same circumstances their parents were. So, you know, what, what are they, what, what, what chance in life do they see? What future do they, these kids see for themselves? Right. If they've already seen what their parents and grandparents have gone through. So if you grow up with that mentality, you know, you've got to do whatever you do to survive. And like, you know, who's, who am I to, to judge their blame them for what they do in those circumstances? Yeah. You know, you, you, we wouldn't do anything diff necessarily different. Yeah. A lot of everyone's people, a product of their what, environment. And that's what, that's what's upsetting is when people judge and they say, Oh, we have the same chances, but it's like, no, we don't. Like if you grow up, if you grow up here and I grow up here and where I grow up is, is crime ridden because there are no jobs. It's poverty. It's, you know, it's hard to get, it's hard to get food. It's hard to get healthcare. It's going to be worse for me. It's going to be harder for me. That's like seven different obstacles. I got to jump over while you walk straight in a straight line. And I got to jump and hurdle over obstacles just to get to the spot where you're at. Like that's what's not understood, man. It's never been a, a level playing field. It's, it's no. level for certain people, but it's not level for everybody. I mean, look, you used to live in the Bay Area, right? You used to live in the Bay Area. You know, I, I grew up in Richmond, and then we moved to Sparks. And my parents always talked, and they were like, you know, it was a, just a better environment to have kids in. It was safer. And, I, you know, I look, I think about if we hadn't, like, what would have happened if we hadn't moved? Like, would I have the same opportunities? What, what things would have been different? just based on where we were living. Nothing else. Right. Like, right. parents still had a good job and everything, but just because we lived, you know, in Richmond, the things that we would have been exposed to, the things we, that would have could have happened were completely yeah. different. Yeah. When did you move uh, to Sparks? Well, I was in sixth grade. Okay. So, like, 93, 92? Okay. Okay. Yeah, that was about. I moved. I moved to Reno from from Hayward in '93. So, um, yeah, I totally, totally get it, bro. Um, it, it was, it was, it was definitely different culture shock. Um, obviously, it had to be for you too, especially coming from Reno. Yeah. I mean, at that point, like it was, 
it, it was different. But at the same time, I felt that um, things were things were cool here. I felt that like schools were good. I mean, I, it's it, it's funny to me now to see how low they are on the on the totem pole. I felt that I got a decent education here. And looking back at some of my friends from California in certain cities, they told me their shit was worse than ours. So it was like, I don't, I mean, it's, it's tough. I don't know. It's just all around. It's just tough. Yeah. It's, and people don't realize that they don't have that perspective, especially it's, uh, you know, and I don't want to stereotype, but it always seems the people who lived in these small towns and spend their whole lives there. They're the ones that are always talking to, you know, saying that stuff. But it's like, what are you basing that on? You don't, you don't even have a leg to stand on. You never even experienced anything else. Yeah. How can you be speaking for other people? Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's tough. If you've never been anywhere, you've never been around people. How can you generalize or categorize people if you've never had the chance to even meet or be around that person? If you live in yeah. a small town and you lived there your whole life, man, those everybody know everybody. So I mean, you know, you're not experiencing anything new at any point. You're just meeting the same people, seeing the same people over and over again. So yeah, and like, everyone like, thinks the same. Point. Yeah, everyone thinks the same. Everyone does the same things, and you're not exposed to different ideas and different ways of living. And you, you, there's things you don't even know about, and you, it, it's like you know, you don't know what you don't know. Very true. Very true. So how how did you get into um, like activism and stuff out in this area? Like, what made you want to start speaking out more? You know, it was just an accident. It wasn't anything I really decided. It was like um, I started going to open mics mm -hmm. and sharing my poetry and you know my music, and people heard what I was talking about. And then from there, just I mean, literally, you know, over the last twelve years, it spiraled like. People would, you know, invite me to these things or re reach out to me and just ask me to do stuff. You know, it, it was started with just saying yes to things that at first I wouldn't have necessarily have done, you know. Right. And then as you get more involved and you start meeting more people, and you learn about this organization, what they're doing, you learn about that organization, what they're doing. And then as you're just out there, you know, just being a part of these things, people start, you know, people, other people see you and reach out. Because once, you know, you do one thing, people are like, all right, that person's willing to, you know, do something. So they're more likely, you know, and then your name gets passed around. And so, you know, it just, it just a natural network, you know, Reno's small still. So, you know, you go to these events and I, I would see the same people. And then all of a sudden, you know, after five years, they're like, oh, like you, you work with this, you know, this is what I do. I see you all the time, but I don't really know you. It's just like how the hip hop community used to be here. Right. You know, you know. You go to the same shows, you're hanging out the same places. And then eventually, you know, you start working together, you start talking to people and it is, it's the same exact thing. It, it, the, it's mirrored just like that. Right. Right. That makes sense. Okay. Well, speaking of music, um, what's your history in music? I know you're in a band, correct? Yeah. I'm in a band right now uh, called seven out. Although with everything that's been going on, like one of our band, like a couple of our band members are one sixty, other ones in his fifties, and uh, his like uh, his mother in law lives with him, so she's like eighty something. So and we practice at his house, so we haven't been doing practice practicing right. since all this started, just just to be safe. Um, I've been in a couple other bands before that, uh, done some projects here and there, nothing very serious, but just you know just having fun like it was always something i did on the side ever since i was like in college just messing around with friends like I, you know, a friend was a dj we'd sit in his basement he'd play beats i would freestyle and just went on went on from there started you know going to open mics getting more formal introduction meeting people and joined a couple different bands and different projects over the years but nothing too serious or crazy i am working on something right now that's pretty cool though um right. The National Endowment of the Arts has like a city song contest where all these cities across the United States are making a song that represents their community. So uh, Eric Anderson from uh, The Novelist got asked to be in charge of Reno's song. So the other night uh, they asked me to do a little verse, but like all these people from Reno, I found out like, it's cool because they give you your part of the song. You don't know what everyone else is doing. You just have right. like a like some verse, some lyrics and stuff, but Cliff Porter's on it, Grace Hayes, 
Um, Tom Gordon's working on it. A nice. bunch of different people, musicians from all over the city I found out are working on it. We're filming music videos right now. So it should be done in a couple of weeks, and I think it should be cool. Uh, we did my video shoot the other night on top of uh, the El Dorado um, parking garage, and I've seen some other shoots fr from different spots around Reno. So it's gonna, it should be pretty cool. I'm excited, you know, humbled to be asked to be a part of it and working with all these great people from, from the community, and I can't wait to see how it turns out. Nice. That sounds dope. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to checking that out, man. Yeah, I know y'all posted, so I'm definitely looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, man, so from the music, then you also, you also, man, you, you do a lot of things. So you also do the podcast and, and, and the radio show as well. Yeah, um, yeah. I was working on the radio show just now. So, uh, you know, I got to give a shout out to Caesar, my man. He, uh, it was probably like five years ago. He was like, hey, you know, we should start a podcast. You know, we'd always be hanging out, just talking shit with each other, with our friends, making people laugh. He's like, it's funny. Like, people, like, it's, we have a good time. We should just get together and do this. You know, I was like, sure, whatever. You know, like, I had no idea how, to, how we'd even do it. But, you know, eventually we, we, we went to a straight up class. Someone taught on how to do a podcast. We started doing research. Caesar bought some equipment. I bought some equipment. And then uh, it started off with us just like practicing literally in my living room and on, in my, on the deck in my backyard. And we like sent it out to people like, what do you think of this? You know, is this bullshit? Like, you know, is it funny? We got, you know, we did probably three or four practice episodes, heard back from probably half a dozen, 10 people. And, uh, 2017 we started and right when we were starting that k wink you know radios you know became a thing and uh they were looking for djs and k wink's a partner with hall with holland project and i was on the board with holland project so they you know they were like hey you want to do a show so i was like i told caesar i'm like hey we're about to do this podcast what if we did a radio show too the podcast is about hip-hop music we can just play hip-hop on the radio show so literally just kind of coincidentally they both we literally started both things at the same time without ever planning it that way crazy um yeah the podcast is dope man i was lucky enough to be a guest when you guys started off a few years ago and it was uh it was definitely fun man that was the first podcast that i had been on um and you guys make it really chill and really laid back so it does feel like you're just kicking it you know with some mics on you know you don't even realize yeah. mics are on while you're just kind of just talking shit so yeah man definitely fun you guys do make it dope and i'm uh congrats on you guys passed the 100 episode threshold right uh with the podcast we're close i think we're at 94 95 okay yeah. but uh right i'm right before this i was putting together the 106 episode of the radio show so man that's dope yeah dude. it's the um yeah i was telling remember i was talking to caesar um it's cool about having a radio show, um, I would think it would be is like if you guys now kind of have a chance to break records, you know, you guys can, you know, find, if you guys find stuff around that maybe nobody else knows about, you can kind of turn on your crowd to new shit, you know, that's, that's I what think we, that's always cool. That's what we've been doing lately. We've been trying to feature local artists every single episode. Like we've, we've played you, you know, um, Savvy Balboa, um, yeah. just a, a couple, you know, Chris Maselli, um dialect just people you know some people you know who've been doing it a while here in reno but other people who are new just to you know we're like we feel like we got this platform you know if if we say we're about right. you know if we say we're about the culture we got to represent so you know we've been we've reached out to people and how you know it doesn't matter you know people you don't even know have like hit us up like hey we heard you on the radio here's my song you know we're like oh this is good you know we'll play it like it's not we could play whatever we want. And then we had that, once we had that freedom, we were like, we got to use it. You know, Caesar always says, use your powers for good. So exactly. we're, trying to, we're trying to put, you know, some shine on people and just share that, you know, if they're out there, you know, support the community as much as we can, you know, whether it's, you know, interviewing people on the podcast who are doing the good things or uh, people who are making music on the radio show. Yeah. Man, that's, that's dope. It's needed. Um, I think especially somewhere here, it, it, it's needed to have people who are willing to put on for the city and like kind of usher in 
things because you know one is some people in some places they can get into a position where they kind of feel like they have a little power or a gatekeeper and then they they kind of shut off and not give back or open that door you know what i'm saying so it's it's dope to see that people here are looking out for everybody you know what i'm saying like because we are i mean we're all, at the end of the day we're all that we have and if we're not looking out for each other that's how cities make a push. That's how artists exactly. push out of a city. You know what I'm saying? You have to do that. You guys got to all be, you don't have to be um, kumbaya with everybody, but, you know, just support something if it's good. Don't hate. Just support it if it's good. And it's from your city, support it. That's all. Yeah, like, you know, we always talk about, you know, like people are willing to support, you know, people they don't even know, pay $100, travel four hours to go see their concert, but you won't pay $5 to see your friend's show down the street. Who's right. and like every person that started there, you know, at some point, every person started at that and they had to win their local crowd over. So, you know, we, we like, we love Reno. We want to support it. And like, you know, we like, uh, Anthony from neon Babylon, you know, he made a good point where he was like, you know, people need to have pride in their city. And for a long time, people from Reno always had this chip on their shoulder and wouldn't really, represent it and we wanted to change that where it's like look this is where you're from <laughs> you know love it and hate it whatever it is but you know rep it like if you don't like it make it better and help other people yeah. trying to make it better yeah so that you know yeah. that's basically all we're trying to do you know we yeah. want to go someplace else right. we want to talk shit and say yo yell out reno you know is in the house just like any place else whether it's brooklyn or oakland you know, like, we want to have pride in our city just like those people do. And it starts with, you know, representing it and boosting the people who live there and are doing good things in your community. Very true. Very true. Very true, man. We can change that culture, man. It's time to do it. Why not now? You know? Exactly. You know, so if if you're going to complain, you got to step up and, and do something about it. You know, it's, it's yeah, I think it's, you know, popular people to talk shit or complain but not everyone wants to step up and, and make a difference and, and do something. And if you're not willing to do it for a community, for your community, then, you know, who is? Exactly. Exactly. Shit, man. Um, what's next for you? Um, I know you did say you were, you know, you did, you're, you were working on that, that, that video and that, that Reno song. Is there anything else you're doing right now? I mean, I mean, you're, you're probably, getting ready for school either way that's going to be whether it's online or yeah. in class but i think you know caesar and i really want to take the podcast to the next level uh start doing video and uh you know interview we want to interview people running for office and try and be more informative and so we can uh you know help people make this you know be a part of uh the election process and help people make decisions and find out who's running that way and be more official, yeah. you know, like really keep dope. booking people, you know, people we know, but also try and reach out to people maybe we don't know, you know, and say, you know, look, we, we got, look what we're doing, you know, what you want to come on. And, you know, that's, that's how it gets started. Definitely. Definitely. Well, man, I, I won't keep you too much longer. I do want to thank you for your time, brother. Um, it, it's definitely good to hear about you and the things that you're involved in. Um, I did want to say too, that, um, I'm definitely trying to get more involved in things out here. I've already reached out to you about that. Um, yeah. If there's anything that you know or your little things that are going on, um, man, I'm I'm more than willing to help, donate time, donate services. So if there's anything that I can do, you know what I'm saying, please don't hesitate to call me, brother. Yeah, definitely. You know, I appreciate, you know, what you're doing with this, this, yeah, your Instagram show, show you got going on, just uh that's a, you know, things start small and from, you know, from small things, big things grow. So keep, exactly. keep doing it and uh, we'll keep supporting each other. And, you know, once, hopefully once the things get back to normal, you know, we can uh, make some moves. Definitely, man. Definitely. Um, man, like I said, thank you. Um, For sure. Stay safe out in these streets, man. Um, and hopefully <laughs> they don't make their eyes go back to school because that shit ain't cool, man. My brothers need to be yeah. calm right now. Everyone, everyone out there, stay safe. Thanks for having me. All right, brother. Thanks, man. I'll be in contact, man. Take care All right. of yourself. Peace. Peace. I would like to thank Sean for um, stopping by tonight and um, having a little conversation. 
Um, he is definitely someone I wanted to talk to because he is so active in the city and he's active in the community and I'm trying to immerse myself in my city more. And he's definitely a resource for that. Um, anyone else, if you're looking to find ways to get active in your city or in this city, um, definitely reach out to him um, or me. I'm, I'm starting to get active as well. So um, I'd like to thank everyone for um, stopping by tonight and uh, spending a little time with me and uh, my guests. I hope you had a um, informative time. Um, I hope you got to relax a little bit. Here's some things that were positive. Um, I'll be back tomorrow at noon with my Beirut brother, Glenn. Um, he is one of the dopest producers that I know, and I haven't talked to him in a while, so it'll be nice to catch up with my bro. Um, so like I said, I'll be back tomorrow at noon. So until then, you guys stay safe, stay aware, and I will see you later.